after the revolution, many of the Bolsheviks were allocated to new positions of power after his death. The two people closest to Lenin during his reign of power, Joseph Stalin and Leon Trotsky, both inherited powerful positions. In this picture, Stalin is on Lenin's left and Trotsky is on the right. Stalin became the general secretary, while Trotsky was appointed the Minister of Defense, making him responsible for the military affairs of the Soviet Union during World War II. In the days that followed Lenin's death, there was a power vacuum on who inherited power and control over the massive empire that Lenin had left. Essentially, it was a power battle between Stalin and Trotsky. Many in the Soviet Union believed that Trotsky would inherit Lenin's place after his death, as Trotsky was believed to have a greater ability to lead than Stalin, having made essential military developments in the Red Army after defeats to Germany and Japan in previous wars. But Stalin had different plans for himself. He planned to take over the Soviet Union by killing Trotsky, eliminating any possible threats to him. By doing so, he would be able to take over control of the Soviet Union and apply his communist ideals to Soviet society. As general secretary, Stalin possessed knowledge of the inner workings of the party and used it to his advantage. He exploited many political allies, betraying many of them to reach his goal. People that spoke out against him were killed. In no time at all, Stalin rose to the top. By the late 20s, he had outlined a series of five-year plans that show for rapid economic growth and increases in the productivity of the people. It was also at this time that Stalin pushed one of his most famous ideas forward, collectivism. Collectivism was the act of making production shared and not owned by one single individual or company. The cooperation of all parties was emphasized in the process. The regime believed that such methods would be able to motivate people to work harder and increase productivity for a common purpose. In order to kickstart the five-year plan, Stalin required a tool that could give him power over the people's mindsets and actions. That tool was propaganda. Over the years, the regime vigorously influenced the use of mass media through forms such as radio, newspapers, books, and art. Stalin believed that there was no way better than creating a new society than education, and so, large efforts was made to instill patriotism to the Soviet Union and its ideologies in the minds of young school children across the Union. All of these methods were tailored to a certain narrative. In its early stages, propaganda was meant to spur progress in the industrialization of the Soviet Union. Themes of Soviet Russia's triumphs in war, industry, and prosperity were common in posters with simple and bold designs. The style in which the posters were written compared the progress of the people to battle. Various economic goals were termed campaigns and fronts, resembling wartime propaganda. To motivate workers to achieve the first five-year plan, the regime awarded the title of Udarnik, or shock worker, to any worker that surpassed their goals of production. This title came with several perks, like receiving rare luxuries and privileged treatment. As time went on, this became synonymous with the Soviet way of life. Posters like this one compared productivity in industry from privately owned interests to collective interests. Data visualizations like these made people understand their importance to the Union's progress and were commonly used. However, the success of propaganda came at the expense of creativity and freedom. Several state organizations within the regime were responsible for censorship of printed matter, film, and radio. The main censor was called Glaflit, 
art or literature that portrayed a negative image of the Soviet way of life was immediately destroyed and deleted. Depictions of defeats and setbacks were prohibited. As a result, events like political purges, famines, and massacres that killed millions of people went unnoticed by the general population. You can create the, the bubble, you know, where people live, and then you can, um, you can make people believe that, you know, this is the only um, way of living, you know, without exposing them to other alternatives, you know. But once people are exposed to other alternatives, you know, and then that, that can, can lead to dissatisfaction and it was literally impossible for the people to avoid propaganda entirely. Lectures and meetings were often organized for workers to keep their communist ideals intact. The theater hosted actors that performed plays that depicted the prosperity of the nation or the union's triumphs against the enemy. The first five-year plan turned out to be a massive success. Much was credited to the massive propaganda campaigns that brainwashed the people completely. Despite lower living standards than before, people were willing to sacrifice for a brighter future. To the propaganda is basically saying that, you know, this is, this is the price you pay, you know? I mean, you, we have to suffer first. I mean, to, it's like when, you, when you're sick, right? When you're sick, then, you know, in order to get well, you need, you need to suffer first. You need to, to, in order to get rid of that disease, in this case, the disease is capitalism, feudalism, you know, you need to, in order to, to, to excise that, you need to extricate that from, from your body, you know, you need to go through operations, surgery, you know, um, you need to, you know, take medications, you know, um, so basically you have to go through this kind of this miserable experience before you can get better, right? There was a 50% increase in industrial output and an 18% increase in growth rate. This rapid increase in productivity accelerated the progress of the Soviet Union into becoming one of the world's superpowers that was military and economically self-sufficient. The industrial and economic improvement of the Soviet Union over such a short period of time prompted the regime to introduce several successive five-year plans up until the dissolution of the Soviet Union in 1991.